Hey everyone, it's Alex here at the Code Wolf again. And in this video, we're going to explore my favorite new feature of .NET 7, which is rate limiting. This is a powerful new set of features that gives us a lot of control over the requests and traffic coming into our app. Now, this is also one of those features that's a bit easier to understand with some more interactive or visual examples. So we'll also see how we can use a tool called JMeter to set up some load testing and just see how all of this works in action in real time. Let's get started. All right, so I've created this simple minimal API.NET project to demonstrate some of the concepts we're gonna be talking about with rate limiting. Now, there are plenty of reasons why you might want to implement rate limiting in your app in the first place. This can be used as a simple defense against denial of service attacks, where we prevent numerous requests over a certain threshold. It can also be used with uh, subscription type models, such as pay as you go, where we want to control how many times a user can access an API. You can also use this to improve system stability. If you know a certain layer of your application can only handle so many requests, you could use rate limiting to keep the traffic down to those levels. But anyway, let's just get right into how this works. So in order to get set up and running with rate limiting, the first thing you'll want to do is add a NuGet package. So if we go up to our NuGet package manager, make sure that you have the microsoft.aspnetcore.rate limiting package installed. And this is new in .NET 7, so whether you're using the preview version, uh, make sure to include pre-release up here if that's the case, or if you're watching this after the release, um, it should just have an official 7.0 version here. So once that's installed, back in the program file, the way we work with rate limiting is through middleware. So if we look at this first method at the top here that says use rate limiter, remember in .NET, anytime we see a method in our program file that starts with use, that's usually adding middleware to our pipeline. So in this case, it's adding rate limiting middleware. And we can pass in an options object to that method. So in this case, we're using that options object to just set the rejection status code to 429. And the 429 HTTP code just means too many requests. So it's a good fit for what we're doing here with rate limiting. Now, after that, we have a few extension methods, and these are used to add different types of limiters to our app and we register those with a policy name, and then we can apply them to endpoints later on. Now, there's four different types of rate limiters currently in .NET 7, and we're going to be looking at three of them here. The fourth one is a little more advanced and difficult to demo in a simple scenario like this, but these are the three most common, so let's see how they work. So the first type of limiter that we're going to be working with is the token bucket limiter. And the way this one works is if you think of a bucket of tokens, Every time a request comes into your app, it's gonna take one of those tokens out of the bucket, and then when there's no more tokens in the bucket, all future requests are either denied or queued up. And we're gonna be talking about queuing later, so for now, let's just say that they're denied and they're rejected with that 429 status code. Well, this rate limiter also gives us the option to add more tokens into the bucket over time so that more requests can be handled. And with each of these limiters, we can see how they behave using the options objects that we pass into them. So for example, if we were to look at the parameters on this token bucket one, you can see that the first parameter is the token limit, which is the number of tokens the bucket is allowed to hold. And so we start with five of them. So we're passing in five here. And then these next two parameters deal with queuing. So how we, uh, so the order in which we pull things off the queue and how many can go into the queue. But again, we'll look at that later. The more interesting parameters are these last three. So first we have this time span dot from seconds with uh, and pass in 10 here. This means that every 10 seconds, so we're creating a time span, every 10 seconds we're gonna put more tokens into the bucket. And how many are we gonna put in? Well, that's gonna be three, which is the next parameter. So in summary, the way that this token bucket limiter works is we start out with five available tokens and then as requests come in, they use up those tokens, but every 10 seconds we put three more back in the bucket. And obviously you can adjust these parameters as needed for whatever sort of traffic volumes you want to be able to handle. And this true at the end just says that the bucket automatically gets refilled um, with three tokens every 10 seconds. So it's a lot easier to understand how this works if we actually look at a demonstration of it uh, using a load test or simulating traffic somehow. So this token bucket rate limiter is actually applied to a simple get method on our API down here. 
So you can see I've created this endpoint that maps to the get token bucket URL path. And this just returns a string. But more importantly, we add this extension method that says require rate limiting. And this allows us to pass in the policy name of one of the rate limiters that we create up here. Remember, I mentioned that each of these has a policy name assigned to it. And we can use that name when assigning it uh, to one of our methods down here. So in order to test this endpoint, I've created some sample load tests using JMeter. JMeter is a really cool and powerful tool that can be used to simulate all sorts of user traffic or load testing and things like that. The UI or the interface of this is a little bit awkward to use, but the actual functionality of the tool is really awesome. So the way this works is we can just create a thread group for each of the different tests that we want to run. So for this token bucket test, the first one up here, I've created a test that simulates three concurrent users, and these are just gonna infinitely ping our app. So I have this infinite checkbox uh, marked. Then we define a request. So the actual request that those three users are gonna be used to, to simulate some traffic here. So in here, we just say that we want to hit local host at the get token bucket endpoint, which remember over in Visual Studio corresponds to the one method here that we have set up. And then we set up a timer as well, and this just creates a one second delay between each request. This is just to make the results easier to see as they come in, otherwise it will just get spammed with tons of requests. Um, and then we can see those results in our results tree here. So to see how this works, let's first make sure our app is running. So let's launch that over here in Visual Studio. And once that's running, let's jump back over to JMeter. And let's actually just run this first token bucket load testing. And we can do that with the play button up here. So if I hit play, you can see initially five uh, requests return a 200 OK, but then we switch to this 429 too many request status code. And that's because we ran out of tokens. Remember, we initially put five in to start with, but once those were used up, the requests start getting denied. However, as we scroll through this, you can see three more green requests popped up here, and then it went back to red when they were denied, but then three more popped up again, and that's because of what we talked about earlier, where we have this time span that every 10 seconds, it's gonna put three more tokens in the bucket. And this will just perpetually loop since our test is running infinitely, but hopefully this helps you see that as long as there's tokens in the bucket, our app works just fine, and as soon as they run out, we get those requests denied. So I'm going to stop our test here. And the next type of limiter we want to look at is the concurrent load testing. So over in Visual Studio, we register a second limiter here. And this is arguably the simplest type. It's pretty easy to understand. So we just define our options object again and pass that into the method here. And this first parameter simply defines how many concurrent requests our app is allowed to handle. And right now I have that set to one, which is very low, but it will help us demonstrate this concept. And then we have our queuing parameters again as well. Um, so we'll talk about queuing later, but let's see what happens when we run a test with a concurrency limiter. And I've also created a second endpoint to demonstrate this limiter. So if we scroll down here a bit, you can see we're again defining a path that says get concurrent instead of get token bucket. And then we require a rate limiting for the concurrent limiter policy, which again is the name of the second one up here. So over in JMeter, we have our concurrent load testing, which will test our second limiter. And for this one, I've actually defined 10 users, and this has a ramp up time of two seconds, so the requests will increase over two seconds. And this also runs infinitely. But let's see how this works. Let's first clear out our existing results here, and then let's hit run. And you can see this one behaves differently than our token bucket. This sort of just randomly handles or denies requests as the app is able to handle them. Remember, our app can only process one request at a time. So if it's available, the request gets handled. And if it's not available, it immediately gets denied. And we can see that on our 429 status code again here. In a moment, we'll see how we can change these values to have more of these requests handled successfully. But for now, let's move on to the final type of limiter, and that's our fixed window load testing. So I'll shut down our test thread here, and then back in Visual Studio, we have this final fixed window limiter type. And I think this is actually a really interesting type of limiter. 
the way this works is you can think of a window of time and within that time frame, your app is allowed to handle a certain number of requests. So this first parameter of 10 is the number is the number of requests our app is allowed to handle during that time span. Then we have our queuing parameters again that we'll look at later, but the rest of this is defined with these other two parameters here. You can see we have another time span here, just like we did on our token bucket limiter. And in this case, what the time span does is every 10 seconds in this case, the number of requests our app can handle resets back to the first parameter here. So let's say we start up our app and it receives 10 requests in three seconds. Well, that means for the next seven seconds, it will just flat out deny all incoming requests until that next 10 second window opens up. And of course we have another endpoint down here to demonstrate that. So we've attached the fixed window rate limiter to this map get method of a slash get fixed window path. And we have another J meter load test to simulate this. So let's clear out our results here. And then let's run this test uh, to see how this behaves because this one's a lot easier to understand visually. So I'll run our test and you can see the first 10 requests will all be handled successfully. But now until the window resets, all of these will just get denied however many come in until the next 10 seconds starts. So now you can see we have another set of 10 green ones because we're in the next window. But as soon as those 10 run out, we again have all of our requests denied with the 429 until the next window resets and so on. So this is just a perpetual process of resetting that window, handling requests, resetting the window, etc. Now, the last thing I want to talk about here is queuing. And we can greatly change how our app behaves by adjusting our queuing and a couple of these other parameters. So for example, on our concurrency limiter, you might remember that tons of requests were rejected because we could only handle one request at a time. Well, let's see what happens if we bump the number of current requests up to 10. And then for our third parameter, let's say that we're allowed to queue up to 100 requests at once. Remember, the third parameter was the queue count. And on the fixed window limiter, let's also adjust some of these parameters to see how they behave. So in this case, I'm going to leave the request count at 10. So we can still only handle 10 requests per window but let's also bump the queue up to 100 here and leave the other values as they were. So let's restart our app to apply these changes. And once that boots up, let's switch back to JMeter and let's see how this behaves on our tests now. So I'm gonna clear out the results and under our concurrent load testing, let's just hit play. And remember, this is gonna be 10 users simultaneously hitting our app indefinitely. Remember, this is the one that had lots of intermittent rejections earlier. So I'll hit play, and you can see actually now all of them are green. And that's because not only can our app handle more concurrent requests at once, but any that it can't handle are now queued so that it will get to them when it can instead of just flat out denying them. Let's also see how this affects our fixed window load testing. And it's actually a little bit different, and it's interesting to see the differences between how these rate limiters work. So I'll clear this out. And remember, this test has only three users and every one second they ping our app. So let's run this. And of course, we should see our first 10 requests handled. But now instead of denying the additional requests, they're actually getting queued up. And that's why we don't see any red here. We just see a pause until the next window of 10 seconds opens up, which will allow 10 more requests to go through. Essentially, while we're waiting for the next window to open, we can queue up requests and not just have to deny them like that. So when it comes to your app, you're going to have to figure out, A, what the best type of limiter to use is for your goals, and then B, how many requests you want your app to handle, and how large you want your queue size to be, and so on. I just think it's awesome that .NET now gives all these different options out of the box, and we were able to set up all these different types of options with only a couple dozen lines of code. This is a really powerful new feature of .NET 7, and I'm excited to see where this goes over time. So if you like this video, please hit subscribe. Um, I think this is an awesome new feature, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time right here at the Code Wolf.